So what you can see, pit lane is a little bit chaotic because it's still the Friday. You see all of the pit, pit stop equipment um, that we need, all of the, the high pressure high pressure stuff for the guns. And that, that's the car, that's the real car. Well, overall, we employed 2,500 people for two cars. Half of them were with the engines, the rest with the, with the car, with the chassis. Uh, and what you see here is just the, the peak of the iceberg. We have 100 people that travel as a race team. Uh, so it's not even 5% of the population that the other ones that are represented. But it's on the, the same team. 100 every race. Yeah. So Basically. you're here, today's practice. Yeah. What does your morning look like? What do you have to do now? So uh, the engineers have had meetings about the run plan. That means which tires are we going to use now in the two free practice sessions? Which fuel loads are we trying to find out if we need to change the setup of the car? Is it too soft, too hard, too high, too low? Um, the drivers will interact. The drivers will go out. We'll speak to the engineers what they believe is right and wrong. Um, and that day is really a practice day to find out how can we make the car quick for tomorrow, for qualifying and, and for the race. But I'm going also into the briefings after the sessions. I'm listening um, uh, on, on what the drivers and the engineers have to have to say, and I'm a little bit, I'm, a, I'm an observer, and I just, only, uh, I just only interfere when I think I have a positive input. <laughs> so again, it's a concept of letting the ball, ball run, and yeah. uh, have everybody work in their, in their area. So underneath the, the bodywork that you see, uh, that's all uh, composite, that's carbon, it's lightweight, lightweight. If you touch it, you will see that it's ultra lightweight. Here. It's just the body work. Oh yeah, I feel like I can punch it's it It's empty, in. you can punch it. How does AMD get on the side instead of the front? How do you determine the placement of the sponsor? So we, we measure precisely how much exposure a sponsor gets by being on the car. So depending on the size of the sponsorship deal, you're getting more spaces. But to be honest, uh, the stick on the car is just the icing on the cake. It's more the relationship that you have. What kind of ROI can we provide to the sponsor? How can we help them to, incre to increase their sales or um, um, help them with their marketing their targets? What we're doing is tailor-made for the specific partner. Which is the most expensive sponsorship location? I wouldn't say the most expensive, but what is the big, what gives the biggest return, and that's certainly Petronas and, and Mercedes, because it's perceived as a Mercedes. We're not doing a lot of branding, but the most important is the star. Does the success of F1 and the team have any bearing on Mercedes sales for the consumer? Yeah, so the, the, the let's say the ultimate number to know is um, win on Sunday, sell on Monday. How many more cars are we selling by uh, being in Formula One? The truth is, I think over the 10 years, our uh, success in Formula One and participation has uh, contributed to Mercedes and AMG being perceived as a more sporty and luxurious brand. And that is a slow process. It needs to, it, it needs time for people to associate a brand with certain characteristics. But definitely, we have added our part. So does that work, where you can track sales on Monday after a good race weekend? No, because generally people are not buying on Monday just because we won on Sunday. I, I think it's a long-term uh, branding exercise where people say, okay, what is what is it that I think about a Mercedes? And that has very much changed to, to luxury, to high performance, to hybrid, to EVs. Um, and uh, we are trying to communicate that. What motivates you? How can I say, I don't, I don't like uh, losing. Um, I, I see it like, for me it's about meeting my personal expectations in whatever I do and uh, obviously apart from my private life, um, uh, making this team successful over the long term, not a single year, I think you need to look at it over, over 20 years, um, that, that motivates me and, and being part of that, uh, of that Mercedes legacy. The Mercedes operation looks and feels different than some of the other garages. It feels much more advanced and more high tech. Is that true? Um, I think you need to be to give credit to all the other teams. They're trying their best, and, and certainly the big teams are all on a similar level. Uh, and everybody else, with the cost cap having come in, are able to, you know, up their technology and and their infrastructure and capability. And this is what we were aiming for by introducing those rules. Do you use your tech partners? Like you have AMD and HPE. Do they help you with the tech? Yes, massively. Uh, 
I think we have a whole roost of, of tech partners that help us in various parts with CrowdStrike and that is data, uh, data security is immensely important because this is you know in, in innovations business so they help us. AMD uh, uh, has been a partner for a long time in the same in the same way like uh, HP has done it. Uh, Qualcomm is now one of our partners, Stamp Dragon, and their technology of data is fantastic. So it's a great group of partners, and I wouldn't single out any anybody because we have five or six tech partners and that's the future. But what do they actually do? How do they make the car faster, more efficient? So in various ways, we, it is about um, data processing speed, it is about data download, the car comes in here, how can we get uh, all of those data quickly into, into our engineers' uh, minds, how do we filter the noise, uh, what kind of AI or machine learning tools. I was going to ask about AI. Yeah, my, my dream scenario is obviously one day we don't need the engineers anymore and we all have it in uh, machines. They hate that when, I, when, I, when I'm saying I'm that. I'm sure. But, but they don't have jobs then. But they don't have jobs. Yeah, it's, anyway, the, 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 the great thing about Formula One is the interaction man and machine. The machine without the driver and without the engineers is never going to, it's never going to function. Um, it's just so complicated. Again, measuring what a car does on track with all the motion, with all the variables, uh, the, the humidity, the temperature, the the, the tarmac, uh, and then obviously balancing it on the edge of the grip of the tire that changes every corner, every lap. So uh, we need the humans. For the sport, it's having it's have a, has a growing influence, um, obviously. Um, but I think the balance is still right in our business. The machine is never going to replace the driver.